Welcome to Hunker Down with Seth. We have a super bonus episode. Um, bonus because this is the first time I'm attempting something with more than one guest. And it, let me grab uh, my co-host Bernie right there. And um, yeah, we have two of the top comics you'll ever see in your life. We have uh, former car crash victim Drew Barth and also... Also... Uh, Going on multi-time divorcee, Dax Jordan. <laughs> so, uh, so marriage car wreck. <laughs> yeah. But in their own right, they're both top headliners. It, you will definitely not be shortchanged if you see them. I've been a fan of both of them for over a decade. Drew, Dax, thanks for being this so we could just BS. So, what's going on, guys? <laughs> some clubs, I'm still a top host. <laughs> <laughs> In some clubs, I'm just a top. <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask. In those clubs, I'm a middle. <laughs> <laughs> well, every sandwich needs me. <laughs> Except for Dax, he's a vegetarian, so he's the... Uh... Yeah, fake meat. I'll take it. I'll take impossible. Yeah. He can, uh, Seth can do the Satan. <laughs> I've said it before. <laughs> <laughs> I've always suspected. Yep, I am a Satan worshiper, so. Uh -huh. I, I don't know, what's Satan? I don't get the reference. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, is it made of wheat gluten, I believe? It's a very, I, I believe uh, so. It looks like. like it, it looks like something. It looks like something that should be sold for if you have like a collection of parakeets or something. Or it looks like that kind of suet type of thing. Like it would just be put on a on a stick and then offered to birds. I don't. I don't really know if you eat it, but it does. Uh, it, apparently, it does substitute for meat. Yeah, it is a good uh, a good popular meat substitute with an unfortunate name. It's like S E I T A M. I believe. <laughs> they could change the name. <laughs> I think it's actually if Satan like grew up in like kind of a privileged white neighborhood, he would be Satan and <laughs> <laughs> an attempt at rebranding through yes. the lens of privileged whiteness. <laughs> yeah. So hard, hard hitting questions, Drew. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, not too bad. You know, my wife and I were kind of already hermits to begin with, so. We haven't really changed up our day-to-day -day schedule too much. Uh, she just started a new job at Microsoft's, and he's kind of going through the whole onboarding process just over the phone and Skype and everything. So it's, and then I just kind of hang out and then just kind of poke around on Twitter all day and play video games. And that's kind of what my day has been like anyways. So it's not too different. It's just the grocery runs are fewer far between. Yeah, I, I've noticed on the Xbox Live you're doing uh, fa Final Fantasy seven and uh, fifteen. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. I'm not good with Roman numerals. Sorry. Uh, oh. <laughs> or Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> nope, just those Mayan numerals. Uh. Well, well, I love I love video games, but. Those ones in particular are the ones that have like tremendous amounts of hours that you need to put in to finish it. And I just sort of never thought, like, well, I'll just, my time of playing those video games is just sort of passed. And I'm um, kind of like, well, unless I'm not allowed to go anywhere for several hours. And I think I put in like 100 hours into it. And I, and I don't really feel any better about it. No. <laughs> I don't either. Was, was it worth it? <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, it, it was free. So that, so that helped. But, um, but 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 I feel a little. Uh, I'm I'm not getting in better shape while playing it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well, I also noticed you do a Gems of War. You do. Uh, you're quite a gamer. <laughs> I love. Yeah, I love video games. I really do. And and my wife just got a, a new job at Microsoft, working on actually like Xbox accessories and stuff, and, and working with companies that do like third party controllers and stuff like that. So. Uh, we're kind of a video game 
household anyways, and then now that my nephews are growing up and are able to actually enjoy video games, like we're really starting to like shift gear to be the really cool aunt and uncle now, so that's, that's what's really fun. Oh, nice. When did she start this uh, Microsoft job? Uh, this last contract just started like three weeks ago, but she'd worked, worked there a couple times before in a couple of different contracts in different departments, but this one is a much more slower paced kind of thing and talk about I mean it is all this was starting to unfold and people were losing their jobs I, I was looking at my wife and being like you know this is a new position that you're in but also at the same time it's not an industry that's going to be starving for money anytime soon so right. go cool. yeah yeah, <clears throat> wow. yeah. yeah. Was she otherwise sorry to take over the interview process? But you're not that good at that. Was she otherwise going to be doing some of this from home, or was it going to be an office based? Uh, it was already going to be a little bit of work from home, but her last contract was a lot more flexible with that. This one was going to require a lot more for actually going on to the Microsoft campus in Redmond. So it's been a little bit of an adjustment thus far, especially because throughout the interview process. One of the things that our teammates, prospective teammates, were trying to pitch her on was like, you know, this is a really cool team. It's a smaller group, but you know, we're we're all friends. We like to hang out and you know get to know each other and everything. And then so she gets the job, and then the first thing that happens, like, okay, so now none of us can hang out together. Uh, <laughs> Damn that bullet! Wow. Yeah. But it has been interesting. I mean, she's she's been doing like the virtual sort of happy hour type thing. Like getting to know people while having a glass of wine, they all sit around and just video conference. It's it's a weird 2020 way of getting to know your new coworkers, I suppose. Fantastic. All right, back to you, Seth, with the hard hitting update. Ashley, let's uh let's bring your wife on. I you know you're she seems to be the one doing all the things. You know, being the most productive. <laughs> oh, she's it. working a lot more. She's making more money than I am. Does that help? Oh, absolutely. I mean, and it, she's lucky too because my fiance. At her old job, she's a programmer. Uh, they laid off half the programmers and and cut all the rest who they kept on twenty percent salary. So. Oh, whoa. Oh. So. Like at least she's with her new spot, huh? Yeah. Now she's at Jimmy John's. She makes sandwiches. <laughs> so. They're so fast, you'll freak. I've heard. Definitely. <clears throat> and everybody's freaking out right now, so. You know, don't need to worry about that part, so it's just fast. Yeah. People always need sandwiches. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, Drew, um, I want to talk about something. Um, years ago, you were hit by a car. It was very unfortunate. And um, and I remember you got hit on a Friday, correct? Yes. And you were supposed to do my show on Sunday. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to do the big bag show that Sunday. Yes. So, of course, we uh, decided to have a fundraiser. Tony Daniels graciously stepped into headline. Uh, my question is, when will you pay back the 200 bucks I donated to the GoFundMe? Oh, wow. That's, it, well, you had a figure of the big has been running on it the whole time. Yeah. Then, I don't know if you have, like, a, a barter system where I can work out and trade or something. Uh, I, I've been doing some uh, some very light scrimshaw work uh, just in that downtime, and mm. it's, uh, I've carved some things that don't really look like anything, but I did put time into them. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe a little I whittling. I'd like to bid on one of these immediately. Oh, fantastic. I've got, I've got a narwhal tusk with your name on it, Dax. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take $20 bid. We'll start the oh, video. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. You're a third of the way bid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could whittle me an owl. I could. I could. I've been whittling the whole time that we've been chatting so far. I've got two parakeets, and then I think was either going to be a snake or a server. <laughs> <laughs> Could I get a Cerberus cock ring? Yeah. Well, another? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for my cock. Oh, okay. Oh. Yes, gotcha. I can totally do that. All the guys at the Asian spa are uh, hoggling, so. <laughs> of course, absolutely. It's awesome. It's awesome. One place, yeah, it's, it's one, place, one place you want to look really cool right now is an Asian spa. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is Cerberus the three headed dog that guards the gates of Hades? Uh, Hades? <laughs> Hades? Is that, is that like when the devil had, like, when he's going through. Uh, maybe that was Satan hangs out at Hades. 
yeah. No, well, Hayes. I think it's Hayes. Hey, well, I don't know. Um, in Wisconsin, it was Hayes. You know, it's it's ah. it's like what do you call pop? You know, what do you call soda? Pop or Coke or it might be a linguistic thing. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's it's or a regional Hades. thing. Between, <laughs> yeah, it's a regional thing between either Greece and Wisconsin. <laughs> exactly. When <laughs> Barb was teaching me about Greek history, and you know, in between bowling lessons, you know, she's like, Cerebrus, you know, she guards that Hades, and then they watch the Packers, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Although in Hades, everybody's a Bears fan. That's Packers hell. Uh, I think they're all haters. <laughs> haters. What's the difference? Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Good reference right there. Thank you. Yeah. So, what what were you doing uh, before this con COVID? Convid, I, I'm a fa- <laughs> See, I can't talk because of that. Just say China virus. That seems to be going over well. Yes. Uh, so, I, I was in the midst of trying to really stitch together my plans for 2020 as far as going out and performing. I was also acting a lot more. A bit. I got a new agent at the beginning of this calendar year, and I was starting to go out on a lot more. Actually, uh, back in like November or so, I was. I've gone out for some commercials and things like that, so I was starting to kind of put together a little bit of a, at least a little bit more of a, a, a regular career, um, and then kind of like a, that odd feeling of it, everybody within an entire industry all being out of work at the same time. Yep. Uh, it, it it had that feeling of like no matter how long it was like everybody was playing a video game. And then everybody had their system unplugged at the same time. And it didn't matter how far you progressed. It's like everybody's just fucked at this point. Yeah. yeah. It's like the typewriter industry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Pretty much. I always said that. <clears throat> yeah. It's a uh, typewriter industry was key. Yes. <laughs> it was key. <laughs> exactly. So. That was a tough shift. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the axe you want to take over? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying sitting back, uh, watch, watching you drive this train, Seth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Did you hear about that guy who tried to drive a train into that hospital ship down in uh, California? Yeah, I, I literally, no. I literally live next to the port. Like I'm in Long You're Beach. Here. And uh, so apparently it was a guy who like had some sort of conspiracy theory about the uh, the HMS Comfort, the, the hospital ship pulling in, yeah. and, or the Mercy, and so then he had some sort of crazy idea about ramming the train into the ship, and he'd actually, I guess he'd hijack the train and then like bash through a couple of. Uh, like barriers and such like but I just what a weird idea like I'm gonna hit the hit the ship as long as the track is pointing at it <laughs> wow and what's the track pointing at the ship I you know I don't it was know. close I, I feel like if from this point forward you'd have to imagine they're like okay just never park the boat in front of the track again in case some other dude wants to do that so yeah okay I gotta follow up on this yeah yeah <laughs> And this guy thought that the ship had, like, weird medical experiments going on or something like that. You know, he was definitely a conspiracy nut. So, uh, oh, I just, this is a bummer because this is exactly like a screenplay that I'm halfway through. So I guess oh, I'll go back to the drawing board. Wow, oh. wow, wow. Do you have the one where you have to keep the train under 55 miles an hour? Is that how that works? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh... <laughs> Well, Drew, you're yeah, man. you're quite experienced with train tracks, having driven your car onto them during the Bridgetown Comedy oh, yes. Festival. So, oh my gosh, yes. I'm deferring to your uh, expertise on this. Uh, so, well, let me tell you something. Those train tracks will just jump out of nowhere. You might think you're about to turn down a street that is uh, running parallel with all the other streets, 
And it could just be that you're going to find yourself immediately bumping over a whole bunch of rocks and railroad ties as um, Ari Shafir and Chris Fairbanks and I want to say Andy Peters were all in my car trying to figure out what the hell just happened and how quickly I would have to move my car or call the police before we were actually hit by a train. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, I'll just, uh, I have so many weird, indelible memories of that. But none more so than when all the comedians that were at this after party, like two blocks away, managed to find out and come like drunkenly pouring around the corner like somebody had just burst open a pinata full of idiots and all were just bursting around my <laughs> car. And I remember Kirk Brothaller was right in my face with his phone and his camera pointing and being like, what happened, dude? Just what happened? What? <laughs> And then the police pulled up, and all the comics scattered like cockroaches. It was fantastic. Yep. <laughs> Except for, I think, Billy Wayne Davis, who was trying to really drunkenly explain what had happened to the cop. And everybody was like, no, Billy. And he's like, no, that's a whole fucking thing. And I'm like, all right, let's calm down, Billy. <laughs> that's a good Billy Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. And fucking Lars Calio. If Lars Calio had not come through and... I think he changed my tire in about four minutes. I think he's used to doing it in like two degree weather and not having a tire. But for some reason, he was able to just quickly change it out once my car had been winched off the tracks because my car, my tire was just shredded. But he was uh, just the nicest. Again, just an incredibly Canadian nice dude. Yeah. Well, well, well. You know, I, I'm trying to keep it positive, but I've heard, I got some fun Lars Road stories to tell you. So. Oh, really? Yeah, it's... It's pretty crazy. So, he, I love the guy. I absolutely adore him. He's offered me his couch uh, in any situation if I make the trip up to Edmonton. But, uh, yeah, there's some stories that I've heard through, like, Damon Schritter, Daryl Lennox, and uh, Paul Meyerhog that you would really say, Lars, he did that? Oh, fascinating. So, which would be... Which would be a great, which would be a great thing to say on this show, but uh, no, I got to keep it positive, so we're gonna move on. <laughs> well, I'll have him on next week to defend him. So uh, actually, I had him on a couple. I think I had him on last week, like a week ago today. So oh, well, there you go. Right. You don't listen to my show. I I think I've heard every single one of them twice. Oh, good. Ooh. Very powerful weed. I'm about, here I'm about four episodes behind. I, I think I got to the one where I think Seth shot Jr. in the last season finale. <laughs> I'm oh. not really sure what happens next, but okay, uh, I'm almost there. He wakes up and it turns out this was all a dream. Oh. Uh, yeah, I thought I was Not running enough. an inn up in Vermont, that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, I guess an inn in Wisconsin. Oh. Uh, I'm not good with classic TV. I mean, I don't think there ever was a show about an inn in Wisconsin. Uh, I think that was the plot line of Design Women. No, no, no. You're thinking of um, Perfect Strangers. Oh, that's the one where there were the two guys living in the, the women's uh, apartment building. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. <laughs> Equal parts aggravating and entertaining. Yes. <laughs> it's funny, my wife, my wife will actually play this game with her friends. Well, she'll do that. No, 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 you're thinking of this, and then so and so. And then the other person has to come back, and it's kind of this further disambiguation of what you were initially thinking of. So it would be like, it's like, hey, what was that movie with the guy on the planet where he's trying to, like, get the, uh, you know, reactivated to make Mars habitable again. It's like, oh, Mission on Mars. There's no, no, that wasn't it. No, wait, no, you're thinking of Jingle All the Way. Oh, that's the one I was thinking. Yeah. And it just kind of starts breaking further and further down. And you're right, if you're around people who don't know what you're talking about, there's nothing more bad than this. It's yeah. like, fuck, no, none of this is right. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, no, you're thinking of dysentery. Yeah. I was thinking of disintegration. Oh. I'm always thinking of dysentery, though. It's just, oh. it's just a fetish of mine. 
Yeah, they keep it with you all through here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, plus, if you're if you're from Oregon, Dax, don't you aren't, aren't you kind of genetically predisposed to get dysentery from being near the Oregon Trail? Ah, well, thankfully I was born in Los Angeles. Oh, oh never mind. Then. I was going to so, ask you how to caulk a wagon before that. <laughs> no, they got. You never had your wagon cocked, you know. Thankfully, <laughs> <laughs> I got three sets of clothing with your name on a deck. <laughs> I bet dysentery is actually a good uh, workout technique to keep your butthole strong. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Probably, yeah. You probably could crack a two by four of your quads at the end of that week as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> From all the squatting. Flinching. <laughs> 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 Oh, boy. Yeah, anytime I have some sort of horrendous stomach problem, all I can think to myself is like, thank God it's not 150 years ago. Yeah. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Or even 15 I years ago. One good pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I want to have diarrhea in the bed, or do I want to go out and beat my wolf? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, it's like, how, I mean, good thing we're not going through this thing right now, like 15 years ago, because... Can you imagine doing all this on MySpace? Mm. Right, waiting for all your entertainment to buffer. <laughs> exactly. It's... Yeah. Look, I'm sick, but I want everybody to hear this new song by Train. <laughs> train. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Uh. Yeah, I mean, there's so much more to be pissed off about. I mean, if this was a hundred years ago, we'd just be pissed off at, like, a broken butter churn or something. <laughs> so. I'm, well, speak for yourself, Seth. I'm already pissed about that. That happened to me two days ago, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do for butter from this point on. Yeah, people uh, making their own butter, uh, baking their own bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Fucking, uh... Anviling out their own swords. Everyone's got a nice, fun activity now. Yeah. Well, my I'll... wife and I are gluten free, so we enjoy watching the bread making videos and then just be like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hate no. watch. Or, uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> my fingers swelling. Yeah, um, but... Now, what's it, it? Are you guys both uh, celiac, or one is just helping the other with it, or uh, you guys just don't don't like gluten? Well, my wife's dad has had uh, celiac issues for a, for a long period of time and was buying gluten-free food back before he could really find gluten-free food easily, so would have to, like, special order stuff. So her family's been pretty used to having gluten-free food around. And then, I don't know, I think it was uh, a few years ago, we just sort of all of a sudden decided, like, you know what, what if we just really... We were both kind of having stomach problems, and we're like, what if we... Maybe there's something to that. What if we just tried to... I think we were cutting out alcohol anyway, so we were like, what if we just try to cut down on our alcohol and try to cut down on eating gluten? And we immediately started feeling a lot better, and my um, stock is feeling better than it ever has. And now if I have gluten, I, I, I mean, it won't kill me or do anything bad. It's just that the next day I feel pretty dumb and uh, depressed. Uh-huh. It really gra- grain brain, as they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, feels, it feels really millity up there. <laughs> yeah. wow. how long how long have you been uh, doing that now uh, I guess this was like three years or so three four years or so wow. because it was also roughly around the same time that we switched from alcohol over to, to smoking pot instead that made a huge difference as well so and we uh, yeah we've changed quite a bit yeah now that's the yeast of your worries <laughs> look at you rise to the occasion <laughs> <laughs> Usually do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. I'm, anyway. that's, that's, no, that's I, 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 I agree with you. Watching those bread making videos really makes me tired. It does. It looks like it's a lot of work that other people are doing, and I, yeah. I can appreciate that. I also really love the uh, the Great British Baking Show. Oh, oh yeah. Watching that. Netflix, and that usually is just kind of a parade of food that we couldn't eat without, you know, having. Uh, yeah, but now you're gluten free. Those videos are needless. Yeah, exactly. Now it's kind of like uh, it's like having a hypoallergenic cat. You're kind of like, oh, this is, I, I know what this would normally do to me, but it's kind of yeah. uh, it's it's removed all the the pointy bits. <laughs> See. 
I think uh, my pun well has run dry on this subject, so. <laughs> yeah. Just bringing up buckets of air from the depths of your pun well. <laughs> Just dry heaving jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I. Uh, yeah. Parts where there should be diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Seth? What do you got? Uh, well, you're in Seattle, Drew. So, um, what what's the current mood up there right now? And like, how how are your neighbors watching out for each other? You know, I, I mean, I live in an apartment building, so the, there are there isn't a ton of interaction, anyways. But my wife and I like to walk around our neighborhood just in general, um, which has been ever changing ever since we moved here about a year and a half ago, because it. it light rail is going to be arriving here in some time the next 30, 40 years or so but it looks like there's a whole bunch of people selling property and raising stuff to the ground and putting in new homes so it's, it already was feeling a little bit different anyways but I would say that the overall feeling up here right now is just uh, prickly Just not it's, it's not very friendly which I, I hate to be so Pollyanna about stuff but I, I really just, I get really discouraged when people don't make eye contact on the street or when there's just sort of no real reason to disconnect with people, but it, it feels, I mean, I, I'm just a really very smiley guy anyways, but it's, yeah. uh, I can really feel like people are just not opening up the way that they normally do. So that's that's a little disconcerting. And let's see, judging by your description of the neighborhood, I would say you're in Roosevelt? Uh, no, I'm in Mount Lake Terrace, actually. Oh, damn. I, I used to live up there, up on a, like... Just right down the street from the high school, so. Oh, I live. Yeah, I live right on the uh, that two thirty six street exit. Right as you get off, so we're like right over the Snohomish County line. We're officially out of King County, where Snohomish is now. So. Uh, no homies. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we keep it real. We don't have to bring our reusable bags or any shit like that. We just have uh, big bonfires of straws out in the parking lot. Yes. So. Wow, are you fucking shooting guns and. Mm. Tobacco. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. That's how we order our tobacco. We just, we just shoot a gun at whatever can of tobacco we want, and then you should bring it down from the top. <laughs> a country boy will survive. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah, we got to ride a bowl all the way to the market, so the Whole Foods. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. well, Unfortunately, it takes about a, long, a little bit longer than eight seconds to get there. That'd be funny if a bucking bull was an actual form of transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get a quarter mile on this motherfucker. Just <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> a guy running oh, down the street in circles. <laughs> I got it the next time around. Yeah, it's like you order an Uber, some guy bucks right up to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's surging right now, get on. <laughs> they open the gate. Boom, yeah. you're back out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's a shared ride. We got someone else to pick up. You know, just got oh. another ride. <laughs> oh, uh, good times. All right, let's write that sketch. Oh, mm -hmm. Perfect. Oh, it sounds real cheap to produce. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta convince the AI who's in charge. You really do. Yeah. Just like Westworld, it's all about the cruelty. I knew it. We built it for fun. We built it to be bad people. <laughs> <laughs> I also like the idea of what if they had Westworld also kind of jammed together with like a, a very low tech sort of bit of entertainment. It's like, well, we have this giant interactive simulation of the old west where you can live out any sort of possible fantasy you have we want we also have laser tag that uh <laughs> <laughs> just 
just one room. <laughs> <laughs> you either go straight to the saloon or you take a left and there are going to be some vests in there. And you're going to grab one of the green or the blue ones and make sure you remember your number. And then go down and make sure to tell Janet what your number is and she'll put it up on the scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you get to Westworld. <laughs> miniature golf. Yeah. Yes, Westworld West and Laser Tag and Mini Golf. Yeah, Laser Tag and Mini Golf. <laughs> That's it. Hey, hey, what'd you do at Westworld? Ski ball. <laughs> they don't even call it Westworld anymore. They're just calling cowboys and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're like, uh, are you guys watching Westworld per chance? I am. I am. I, I feel like yeah. I had completely lost out on the last season, so I kind of went power through that over the past couple of weeks, and now I feel like I'm uh, nice and caught up. And uh, my wife walked in, who has not watched it since the first season, and then walked in and saw, like, you know, uh, a very modern city, and then Aaron uh, like, riding a motorcycle, and she's like, is this the same fucking show? I'm like, mm-hmm. Damn, yep. yeah. what, what on earth? Yep. Well, I, I, I recommend it. Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. And it's one of those things where they actually had, like, the five-season story arc worked out before they started the show. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're going somewhere, and they always had this plan, so things are going to connect way back or way forward. And uh, I, what I do feel bad for is the Westworld writers and how clever they are, except that everyone is watching this while every Redditor has all the time in the world. <laughs> Dude, people are like screenshotting every time they show a tablet, a computer tablet on screen. They're like zooming in and reading the serial numbers and like cross referencing serial numbers to every other tablet across the screen and finding, oh my god, wait, look, there might be two maves at this point based on these two different serial numbers. Oh, what if Rehobo I mean, is a, 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 an acronym for blah, 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 or, uh, oh my god, it's, uh, it, I feel bad because Redditors have always been on the front lines of Westworld and figuring out the plots, but, like, it's a full-time job now. <laughs> Ain't nobody else got shit to do. Yeah. I, I was figure out where Westworld's going. I was saying to my wife that it's also been interesting with the, the whole Tiger King thing being such a tremendous cultural touchstone and so many people being looped into it at the same time yeah that now that you've seen sort of the initial wave of interest and fascination kind of pass and now this i feel like a second wave is coming back around and now like well wait a minute isn't this really fucked up aren't these people really messed up i don't think that they were really nice to this person or like it just it's starting to take on a bit more of an examinatory kind of look that I don't think oh, yeah, everyone yeah. has time to like yeah. investigate every single person and what the truth is behind it and like exactly. did, you, did oh. you read Carol's uh, response on the Big Cat Sanctuary uh, website where she yeah. refutes the claims and like oh she might be right actually maybe she didn't kill him yeah. <laughs> imagine how pissed yeah. off you would be if 20 years ago you got away with murder and then some Netflix assholes come by and just <laughs> dig it up. It's like all that hard work for naught. God damn it. So he's kicking over my cold case. I let that bitch alone. Yeah, yeah it's no that, Well, we haven't heard the last of them. <clears throat> or Westworld. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think is, you know who I think is actually at the top of all this is actually Great Tiger from Mike Tyson's Bunch Up. I think he is probably at the very top of this whole Tiger probably. Oh, interesting. Uh, He's mm. pulling the strings from behind the scenes. And, mm-hmm. and then he does his little special movement and spins and disappears. And, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and come around and it's cool to light up. Wait, he was the guy with the, uh, what do you call it, the turban, right? Yes. Yeah. I I never got the timing right trying to beat him. So. I always felt like a problem. With, yeah, usually I would run into this problem where I was six. And I didn't have the kind of speed DIA coordination that was necessary to move on past that. Yeah. Plus, I feel like those old Nintendo games were so hard that it might as well just get to the point it's like, oh, did you not beat it? No. We have to start all over again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dexterity uh, and stick to itiveness. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't for me. Yeah, my... you, uh, I, do you know if you ever do the thing where it's like, I hit, or tell your parents, like, hey, I hit pause on, on the game, don't turn it off, 
because uh, I, I want to play tomorrow, but I, I can't save, and I have to stop at that spot. That's what I'm doing for this interview. I got, ah, there you go. Got my game pause right there. I just need you guys to hurry the heck up, and then I'll be right <laughs> back on it. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, uh, what are you playing, sir? Um, you know, I stick with the old stuff. Like, I still put hours in on Skyrim. I got uh, Gems of War. I, I With Gems of War, it's... Dax, for some context, it's like Dungeons and Dragons and uh, Bejeweled Blitz put together. It, wow. Mm-hmm. It's like I just got to level 270, which means, like, I've been literally putting years into this game. And, uh, but there's these people who are, like, you know, level 12,000 and stuff, so... I think that's yeah. one of the things that's, that's enjoy about the, enjoyable about these sorts of community-based games is that no matter how shitty you may feel about yourself for dropping so much time to some sort of game, there's always going to be somebody who's dropped so much more time than you. So you, <laughs> you can always take solace and you're not the biggest. Yeah, like, Dude, like I play Fortnite. <laughs> I play Fortnite and there's literally guys who stream six to eight hours a day every day for the past two years. Just doing this, <laughs> and uh, but they make money yeah. somehow, right? It, it it's like acting in in comedy. It's like the top guys make the big money, but you know maybe the top two hundred people may you know hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars, while everybody under them is just getting nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dax, that ever uh, interest you? Something some sort of live streaming, or, or kind of what is uh, what have you been doing to sort of quell the creative <laughs> confines that we've all been dealing with? Uh, I've been waiting for this for years, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> all I ever wanted was to take a couple of months off from all my day jobs and night jobs and everything to just fucking sleep in and read my books and take some notes and reorganize my thoughts and uh, go over my old comedy videos and do all the shit I'm normally too lazy to do. Oh, so, nice. Uh, this is all I've wanted. Uh, <laughs> and I'm finally... Uh, but to have that low level of freak out on top of it uh, certainly makes it less enjoyable than it normally would have been. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, overall, uh, I'm into it. Uh, yeah, I got shit to do, uh, but I also love to entertain myself, so I'm not a gamer, but I, I will watch shows. I'll get into my Star Trek and the devs on Hulu and Westworld and check out movies that I've been meaning to watch for a while but haven't. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like I like individual bits of entertainment. I don't like to overcommit to any one entertainment like a video game would demand. That's mm-hmm. part of my problem with commitment. Also, I, I have, speaking of good shows, I highly recommend that series. I think it was uh, The Uninvited on HBO, the one that uh, Stephen King did. Oh, is it good? Mm. Yeah, it's about uh, it's with Jason Bateman, where he gets brought in and arrested for murdering this kid in a really brutal way, but then they also find evidence that he was in another town at the exact same time so they're trying to figure out like how can he be two oh. places at once and it has to kind of deal with this kind of doppelganger kind of idea so it's mm-hmm. it, I won't tell you anymore but it's really interesting and it just finished up and I don't think we'll do it another season but it's it's really good oh that's good see I especially can get on board with a TV show that's a limited run on purpose yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. this one feels very limited on purpose fantastic sign me up mm-hmm yeah, and I I just been watching yeah. Family Guy and that '70s show, you know, the mindless classic Fox, late '90s, early 2000s. Well, like I'm like, it's, it's like comfort food. It, it just kind of yeah. it, it scratches an itch. Like my my wife, I I enjoy watching stuff with, but she really rarely will want to watch something new. She kind of wants to watch the stuff that she really knows that she's seen a lot that just kind of that she likes. So we watch a lot of. Brooklyn Nine Nine and The Office and Parks and Rec, a lot of things that you just kind of find even deeper jokes in upon repeated viewings. But it is yeah. also sometimes difficult to break into something new as well. Yeah, my fiance is the same. I, you know, I'll walk in and she'll be watching Ass Blasters Eight or mm-hmm. you know, Too Many Cocks Fourteen. Right, 
And if you miss two minute comics 13, then there's a giant plot hole. No, you can follow the storyline. It's, you know, we, we got... You gotta check the Rotten Tomatoes on those, because I heard in number eight there were not actually enough cocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we thought the plot line was uh, slowing down around too many cocks 11, but then you, they got this new writer who worked on the West Wing, and it is back to too many cocks. <laughs> Well, they also introduced the the Aaron Sorkin esque uh, trick, the 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 you know, it's the walk and talk. Yeah. Which was kind of like the walk and talk, but it's just like it's walking down a hallway while I was sex. I was working on the same joke, but it was a it was a cock, but it was a cock and talk. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> we always have so much fun, Mr. Speedy Man. Mm. <laughs> I remember one time Dax and I were uh, going to a gig and we were we had just missed a ferry so we sat at the ferry dock and between the two of us we started going back and forth because I think it was around the time of Halloween and somebody had done kind of a mashup costume idea of like mushing two costumes together in one so he, a buddy of mine went as Larry King Kong and he dressed up as Larry King and then also had these big gorilla arms on it was holding like a little kind of Barbie doll with the suspenders and everything. So it was, and I think Dax and I sat in our in my car and we just for like a good thirty minutes just go, went back and forth coming up with like costume mashup types of things before <laughs> and after types of things. It was so fucking entertaining for us. Good. Yeah, clever portmanteau costumes. Mm-hmm. Oh man, those were the days. Mm-hmm. Well, one day. Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> that was the evening. After the game. <laughs> that was the evening. <laughs> That's what it was definitively that time. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm going to end the episode. However, I'm sure we're going to BS for a couple minutes after this. So, uh, thanks for being on, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>